you know, I feel really blessed anytime I, you know, reminisce and remember the things that I had to go through during the period when I was writing my second MBBS examination. This is not even up to half of the um, amount of energy drinks that I had to take during the period when I was writing my second MBBS examination and I still almost nearly failed out of medical school. This particular exam is uh, the one we take in our third year of medical school and it's not really the most difficult you would get to um, write in medical school but then um, it is the one that puts you under the most pressure and for, for example in our school which is University of Nigeria um, there are some rules and stuff that we have uh, for instance we are writing anatomy, physiology and biochemistry and the rule is that if you fail three out of three you would be failing out of the department and you would have to look for um, another de another department that can accept you. So you'd be failing out of medicine um, or you go start school all over again if you really want to do medicine. And if you fail to, you get to write the receipt examinations for um, those two you failed. Hey guys, what's up this morning? Um, I got a paper this morning. Um, it's anatomy. And um, yeah, here is my yellow card. Um, the chances of passing these examinations, the receipt examination, I mean, they're very slim. A lot of people don't get to pass them. Previously, it used to be a green card. It was a green card for the main exam, but um, for this receipt, it is um, it is a yellow card. So, I mean, like one yellow card. If you fail this time, uh, you have yourself to blame. So, um, wish me luck, guys. It's a difficult thought process whenever you sit down and think of the magnitude of, of, of the exam you're about to take, the importance and relevance of this exam. In fact, if you pass this exam, you will be sure that you are definitely going to graduate as a doctor. But if you do not pass this exam, chances are that you might not become a doctor in future. Really sad. So nobody really wants to fail second MB MBBS examination. And that was the position I was in prior to the exam. Now, in as much as they are not the most difficult who get to write in medical school, they are still difficult on me. And, and I had to, you know, I had to accept this fact. Looking at anatomy, for instance, you have to know the anatomy of the entire human body. And you have to do this in barely six months. Reading of attending classes and everything, and you know there are still other stuff that get to distract us. You need to know the anatomy of the upper limb, of the uh, uh, thorax, abdomen, the lower limb, and even the head and neck. You need to know all the muscles and the uh, vessels and the nerves in the head and neck and in the entire body. Goodness. You need to know about the brain, about the spinal cord, about the central nervous system. You need to also know the histology of almost the entire body as well, the embryology of almost the entire human body and stuff. This was anatomy. Then you also had physiology, where you need to know about general physiology, blood, blood physiology, um, cardiovascular physio, gastrointestinal um, physiology, neurophysiology, a whole lot more. Then you had medical and biochemistry. Here you needed to know the metabolism of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, and other stuff. It was a lot of information to, you know, uh, commit to memory because 
this exam is a high standard one. <laughs> you can be asked anything and oh my god, it was tough. Then again, you know, I am actually a freelance um, designer and animator and having to combine work with study and not just study, study as a medical student is not something I would advise anybody to do <laughs> because it would drain you and it's very, it's nearly impossible. But I, I still, for some reason, I didn't want to quit uh, my job. I, I was working with a company and I, I didn't want to quit on the job because I was their in-house designer, graphic designer, and I didn't want to quit because, you know, I was committed and stuff. So I didn't just want to leave. And I felt like since I'm good at multitasking, I could actually do this, but I actually regret not quitting. At least I could have taken a leave or something like that. So I went ahead and was combining work with study and classes and everything. And it was very difficult to recognize myself. So um, a lot of time went into work, time that I could have been using to um, read and to revise and to, you know, just take my academics more seriously. And, you know, this, this affected me. For some time prior to the exam, I didn't really know the magnitude of the exam that I was about to write. I didn't know the... Um, the amount of stuff I would need to read for this exam. Neither did I know the full importance of this examination. So I was just there feeling like, oh, it's another examination, right? I'm gonna pass. I cannot fail. I will never fail. So I had this mindset and exams kept drawing closer, closer and closer. And then a few minutes to the examination, the reality of everything hit me. And then I knew man, I have to wake up and I have to get working. The exams were now pretty close, like two months or three months close, and I had not gone anywhere um, in, the, in the scheme of work. I hadn't finished um, reading the scheme or the course outlines, and I knew that I was in serious trouble. So I had to draft a crash program so that I could meet up with time and actually rescue myself. In the morning, I would wake up very early and get to the library as early as possible, read all day till evening by 5 p.m. Then I would leave the library, get home, freshen up and leave for what we call night class or night reading, where we go um, to classes at night to read till daybreak. So I did this, I'll call it the library house night class cycle and this was what i was operating for almost two months and i was looking I, I couldn't really recognize myself within this period because it was super draining it was very very tasking and tiring and i had to survive on energy drinks and do a lot of stuff caffeine and many stuff i wouldn't recommend any of these <laughs> for anybody so the exams finally came and I wasn't 100% prepared, but I just felt like, hey, I'm, I'm going to do my best. I've done the best I could do. One of the days when I went um, to read at night till daybreak, I did not go with uh, my friend that we had been going for night reading all through, all through the time. But that day he was sick and so I had to go without him and that was the that was one of the worst days of my life because um, along the line I kind of dozed off close to um, daybreak and I woke up and I could not find my phone anymore um, you know I was kind of careless because I won't blame myself because I read and read and read and I was so exhausted and I just decided to take a nap and I didn't protect my phone so well and you know there were other people in the classroom and so I woke up like an hour or two later and I could not find my device and so the Samsung Galaxy device was expensive it had a lot of relevant um, it had a lot of relevant um, PDFs and PowerPoints and lecture notes 
ask questions, a lot of resources in it. And I usually um, read, used it to read anytime my laptop was down and having to lose my device five days to the commencement of this dreaded second MBBS examination was a whole lot for me because whenever I sit to read, I begin to think of my phone and how to get a new one and how much I have lost in the phone, all the pictures, all the memories, everything. It was a lot for me. And two weeks prior to this, I also fell sick. So I didn't really do well in the mock examination. And then before the main examination, I'm now losing my phone. So I was in a very chaotic, emotional state and one of the worst periods of my life. So the exams finally came and I knew that, man, I have to do this. There is no choice. There's no going back. And I know I haven't really prepared up to 100%, but I was like, I'm just going to do my best and take my best shot at this. And I wrote the examinations, you know, and the results um, finally came. The results came out. You know, many people tell me I am book smart. I get this a lot, but I don't really feel like it's true. Then what I know is that I am not a below average student. And so, um, the result took me by surprise. All my life, I never had a taste of what failure is, but I got to taste it in my, in my third year of medical school. I failed two out of three. I failed anatomy and physiology, and I passed biochemistry. I was so lucky, and I knew God had just given me a second chance. There was a second chance actually. If you fail to, you can write receipt examinations. And um, if you pass the receipt examinations, then you continue the program. But if you fail the receipt examinations, you're done for. I took this as a second chance. And um, it was very tough for me. But I decided I was not going to operate the um, library, um, library home night reading cycle any longer because I was kind of scared. I don't want to lose my phone. And you know, that, that um, cycle was very draining. So I decided that I would be staying at home to read. And I began the journey of reading at home. It's one of the most difficult tasks because there is comfort. You have the comfort of your bed, you have the comfort of um, sometimes I play games, so temptation is there. A lot of other stuff, you know, yeah, just more comfortable and it will be more difficult to subject yourself to a lot of hours of reading when you are at home. So I knew that I had to take an extra level of seriousness. I would turn off my phone and toss it aside and you know, take on my laptop and begin to read everything from the beginning. I had to start everything from scratch, anatomy and physiology. So initially I didn't um, use textbooks to study, but now I decided to um, use textbooks, the recommended text to study in as much as I would um, read some PDFs and other stuff. So it was more like you needed to work smart as well as needed to read hard. Read smart as much as you need to read hard. So this was what I was doing. I was now more experienced and it was now um, easier for me to grasp some of the things that I was reading because I had actually encountered them before when I was writing the first examination. Yeah, sometimes I would get that's all through almost the entire time. It was a two month period we were given to prepare for the receipt examination. So I would need to read almost 15 hours out of 24 hours. This is incredibly massive. I, had, I didn't have a life. I went off social media. You know, I would turn off my phone. I didn't, really, I didn't used to get calls. I wouldn't take many calls. Um, you know, then I would take energy drinks every single day. I knew I was distorting the sugar um, balance, the body blood sugar I, I, I had at the time. 
this could have negative consequences but you know i had to dem everything and this was what, what was going to keep me awake all through the night and so i had no choice and to do it in fact i took my bed at some point and you know stood it against the wall so i was like if i ever have to sleep and i'll have to sleep on my desk or i'll have to sleep on the floor and this way it kept me on my toes and i was reading day and night because i knew that i don't i can't afford to um, mess up for a second time because this would be the end of me probably it wouldn't be the end of life but something i didn't want to mess with sometimes i would get frustrated sometimes i would would feel like hey i i just i can't continue doing this any longer i have to give up i i just it's not really compulsory to be in medical school i must not be a doctor after all i'm already into tech and I, I can you know make a living from other stuff i can drop out so it was an internal battle that i was fighting with myself and and i just had to keep going after fighting with myself i would get more motivation because i mean i think about my family i think about my future and i haven't just come this far only to give up i had to keep putting the work and keep doing everything i possibly can and could to make sure that i come out yes and i began to consult um, with my seniors especially some of them who also wrote to seat examinations the previous year I, I had to ask them questions i had to know um get some experience and some knowledge and some guidance that could help me um attack the receipt examinations just trust me i wanted to get everything correct this time so um i also got a reading partner um my one of my guy gerald shout out to gerald um we usually um did a lot of revision together and actually shared a lot of resources um together talking about past questions and um, some pdfs and some relevant materials that we needed to consume in preparation for this exam so um although apart from all of this the personal study is the is really the integral part of this um this whole process of preparing for the exams and so i had two months had passed and i knew the amount of reading i had done and so my level of confidence spiked up almost a hundred percent and i was very much prepared for the receipt examinations and then they began to fix our revision classes for us and i didn't want to miss any of them and i did my very best to attend all of them and that really paid off. So I did my best to revise. I did a lot of past questions, um, including multiple choice questions, and then tried to write some essays, uh, especially anatomy essays, and also tried my very best to revise everything that I had read. And the receipt examinations, the mock examinations finally came. We were to write mock which is multiple choice questions in anatomy and physiology. That's for me. And this time we were given green cards. So we we're giving yellow cards. Hey guys, what's up this morning? Um, I, I got a paper this morning. Um, it's anatomy. And um, yeah, here is my yellow card. Um, previously it used to be a green card. It was a green card for the main exam, but um, for this receipt, it is, um, it is a yellow card so i mean like one yellow card if you fail this time uh, you have yourself to blame the main examinations the previous examination were giving green cards but now we're giving yellow cards and this reminds me of football where you know yellow means warning if you get another yellow card it means red right so after yellow card next is red so it's helped me understand the type of examination that i was going in for after taking the mock examinations, we had two months, sorry, two weeks more till the main examination. And the mock examinations were to carry 30% of the entire 100%, which will be used um, to access, to assess us and determine whether we failed or we passed. So I did my very best to make sure that I was, um, I did well in mock. And so far it, it wasn't so bad. And then, um, main examinations finally came 
there was this um, little fear that was in my mind. I was kind of tense up for, for, for a moment. But then I had to speak to myself because prior to the um, exam, when I was still preparing, a senior colleague and friend of mine actually told me um, that I should make sure that I build my confidence so much that I um, take out every form of fear and doubt that was in my mind. So I tried my very best to be as optimistic as possible when I was preparing for this um, examination. And I also knew that now that the exams had come, I still need this confidence because lack of confidence can really do a lot of harm. I didn't have confidence in the examination that I failed previously. And that was one of the reasons why I actually failed. And so I did not want this to repeat itself. And so I had to <laughs> get back my confidence and really it, it worked. It works. And then I also made sure that I kept praying and praying and praying in as much as I was doing study work. And I knew that God was hearing me. And he actually wanted me to go through this experience to make me a better um, medical practitioner in future. Because right in the main examination, there were a lot of things that I did not get to study because of the little time that we had to work with. But because of the receipt examinations, you know, I came out more knowledgeable and much more rooted in this preclinical stuff that I need to know. So I count it as a blessing in disguise. You know, sometimes some opportunities come and they are not so beautiful, but all things work together for our good. So the first paper went to, the first day was anatomy and we were to write both the MCQ and the essay part same day and so there yeah, I, I knew that i had prepared a lot and actually attended all the revision classes that they fixed for us and so i was quite confident and then i you know just went in for the examination and yeah i did my best um and then i started to prepare for the next um, paper which was physiology which was to come two days later and so um PCO came, MCQ, did my best. Um, some of the stuff I was seeing were familiar. There were some of the things I encountered while I was solving some past questions. And then they also wrote the essay examinations. And yeah, it was also good for me. Hey guys, today is something like my last exam. Like it's anatomy. Um, practical like histology slides and um, uh, we we'll call it steeple chase so it's all about histology slides identifying histori histology slides and um, soft tissues right so that's my last paper before I write my viva my I, I think they call it viva vols which is um oral exams so um, I'm about to enter I'm on my way to school right now um, wish me luck Wish me luck, guys. Peace. Seven days later, we were to take the Viva Bose examination, which is oral exams, basically. Hey, what's up, guys? Today is a bright and sunny day. I can see the sun. The sky is very blue this morning. Um, I've got a paper today. I've got anatomy. Um, no, I've got anatomy and physiology. Um, Viva, which is oral exams. Yes, so I've got oral exams today. It's the last exam I'm going to sit for in this second MB receipt um, program. Yeah, so um, just wanted to do a quick vlog here. So wish me luck, guys. External examiners from other schools uh, would come. Most of them are doctors anyway. Come and assess us. Um, anatomy, physiology. They would ask you they could ask you any question from the things you were taught they could even ask you any question that is a little bit beyond you and you just have to do your best to get the answers it's one of the most it's one of the it's a very difficult one but it was 10 marks and we knew that we could not mess with this uh, very examination as well so i went for my verbose examination i didn't know what i was going to expect I still did my best as well, try to answer all the questions that 
the, the men were asking me and then I left the rest to God. So, um, a day after the Viva examination was the examiner's meeting. This is a meeting where they would get to compile the scores, um, uh, decide, make some decisions as regards um, the whole examination stuff, whether we're gonna, we're gonna decide who will pass, what the cutoff mark would be, um, a lot of other tough decisions that they get to make in that meeting. So, you know, everybody was nervous. All through the time, um, our lecturers were in there for that meeting. And the most amazing thing is that immediately after the meeting, a few hours later, the results will be published. So it's, it's one of the days where the pressure is so high. Everyone was tense. Everyone was praying. Everyone was, you know, somewhere worried. But I tried my very best at this time you know, to keep my faith up. So there was this doubt that came. There was this fear that came. But I had to ward off every single one of those. And I kept trusting God. Yeah, Lord, you've taken me this far, so I know you won't let me down. And in fact, the night before the day of the meeting, I prayed like I had never prayed before. And I was just so hopeful that all this would come out well and I would pass and, you know, all of that. So oh, the results finally came out. <laughs> I took, I hesitated before opening the results and I actually finally did it. And I saw that I had passed. <sighs> oh, there was this, um, relief that I felt. I felt like, yeah, everything paid off. All the sleepless nights, all the days I went without sleep, it all paid off in the end. And I called my parents, uh, called some of my friends and, you know, broke the news to them. And I gave thanks, of course. And I was so, so, so happy. So yeah, um, I didn't feel out of medical school. I almost failed out, but through the receipt examinations, God helped me to redeem myself. And so here I am, a 400 level medical student, now doing my clinical It's been good so far. I've been catching up, trying my best to catch up um, with my mates because all through the time we were doing receipt examinations, they were they had actually started going for lectures and you know stuff. So I joined up and presently I'm I am preparing for my first um, continuous assessment test. And although the workload is much, I'm trying my very best to read. So guys, the take home for anyone watching this video who is probably still about to take um, medical exams and stuff. Regardless of what level you are, at least you should know that there are three vital things. First of all, your level of confidence really matters. And secondly, you need to put in the work when you need to do it and as much as you need to. If you have an examination, don't take it for granted. Go in, go all in, go hard. 
before you go home. And then finally, be as optimistic as possible. Depend on God. Pray like you never read and read like you never pray. It works every single time. And I think we've come to the end of this video, guys. It's been a hectic year. But the year is almost coming to an end. And I thank God that I was really victorious at the end of this whole thing. And I pray that I never get to experience failure in my life as I did this year. And I'll do everything within my power to make sure that I don't. All right. My name is Praise. You know, the major reason why I vlog or make documentaries like this is because I really want to document my life. I really want to save up my moments. So whenever I become a doctor or in my future life, I can look back at these videos and actually remember what I experienced. That'll be it guys. Um please like and subscribe if you enjoy watching this video and I'll actually see you guys in the next one.